knowing that when we gather like this, surely we will be blessed of his presence. Because he said that where so two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. And so that is the important thing. That's the focus, that he is there. He is here. And so we agree to gather like this on Sundays, and we know that, that he is in our midst today, and that he will, be, he will bless us. We did not come to see ourselves. Now, that might be besides it, but the focus is not to see ourselves. We could have done that in our houses. But we came together, that we all together might see the glory of the Lord. Lord, praise God. We pray that he will pass through the service and bless us today in Jesus Christ's name. Continuing from where we stopped last week. Last week, um, we're looking at, we began to look at, from last week, we began to look at the closing remarks or the closing comments here. Closing remarks of the Spirit to the, to the church ages. The closing remarks. Remarks of the Spirit to the church ages, and we uh, began by seeing where he said he, he was standing at the door and knocking, and that whosoever would hear his voice and open the door, he would come in to sup with him. And, and firstly, we're saying we're making a correction there from some a fundamental problem with the church which is that the church does not understand the speech of Christ. And we saw that through the same, the, we saw the same thing run, played out in the, in, in, in the first coming of our Lord. And when he was speaking to the church, the church could not understand his speech. So he began to ask them, <laughs> I thought you are children of Abraham, then why don't you understand my speech? You are children of God, why don't you understand my speech? Why is it that I say something and then you don't understand? And we saw that that became a problem because that the key of knowledge was taken away by those ministers. But the same thing also, because those things happened there for example, to, to, for the examples unto them whom the ends of the world are come. Now, the same thing has played out too in the running of the Gentile dispensation. And we have come to the end today, and we began to see that the church, too, today does not understand the speech of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when he said, I stand at the door and knock, because of a lack of understanding, it is cast to sinners. So it's what we use in evangelism. God is standing at your door and knocking. But he was not talking to sinners. He was talking to the church. So that word was not actually sent to sinners. It, it, it was sent to the church. So we're saying that to everyone that is in a church, to everyone that has said I am, I am a Christian or something, that word comes face to face with that person. I stand at the door and knock. So it's not something that's supposed to be in evangelism to the sinner and to one that has not found Christ. It, it, it's something I was speaking to people that claim to have found Christ. Praise God. We're correcting that last week and also um, we're saying that it is supping time because he said, now those that hear his voice and open the door, those doors, denominational doors that have been built around, if you can open the doors, say, I will come in and I will sup with the person and then he with me. And and we said this supping. Now, I'm not going uh, too much into it, but just understand that the word sup is actually actually um, supper. It, it is the uh, um, an old form of saying supper to have supper. So you can understand that this is the evening time now. This is the close of the ages. And a great supper is prepared. So it is time to sup, to eat of this thing. But the problem is that people that were bidding are busy. And so he said, those men that 
were bidding, he said, they shall not eat of my supper. But by his grace, we have been given room to come out. So if we have come out now, it's supper in time. It's time to eat. Eat his flesh and drink his blood. Praise God. Now that's where we um, um, cut it last week. And today uh, continuing in the closing remarks of the spirit of the ages, we are looking at the overcomer's throne. The overcomer's throne and in there, we want to be looking at something now. We are looking at the focus is overcoming, overcoming. Now, that's where we took our text. It said, To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down. With my father in his throne. Let's look at Revelation chapter 12. I want to bring in this. We'll do. Um, employ us all to. Um, give some, some time and let's look at this together. Um, This can someone reduce the fan at the back? I think the fan at the back. Let's read Revelation chapter 12. The fan at the back, please. Beginning from verse 1. We want to do some little bit of revelation this morning. <laughs> and let's all just pay attention so that if I, if you don't get something properly, you, you, you bring it in as a question. And let's all study this together now. Revelation chapter 12, beginning from verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. Now, this woman is not my focus. My focus is down, 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 I think, at the 11th verse. But we're just going to read through here. Since we, so that we'll get the entire background. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And now, now, how many has um, come to this chapter in Revelation? This chapter. How many have come to this chapter before? Okay. Now, um, uh, our Catholic friends, our Roman Catholic friends, the uh, in a most carnal understanding or in a most carnal Understanding, and the, 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 the book of Revelation presents us with three women. Um, yes, this is the, the first woman is seen here. The second woman is seen in Revelation chapter seventeen, and, and then there's a third woman seen in Revelation chapter nineteen. In. 
three women. Uh, now, this is a code. The Lord was coding something because Church, uh, that's the Roman Catholic Church. Now, what he's signifying here is also a church. A woman signifies a church. Represents a church. For the church is the wife, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. But this woman, this great wonder appearing here is described to be clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Praise God. Now, um, this, this woman here uh, signifies Israel, the church, that old Orthodox church, the church of Israel. You can get that from the way she's described. She's clothed with the sun. The sun is the greater light. The moon under her feet. Now, she's standing at a time where the the dispensation of the lesser light was fading away. Had the lesser light to work with. Before the um, S-U-N sun rises in the morning, we have the moonlight, which is, is just a lesser light. And it's a, actually a re reflection, a reflection of the light of the sun. Just to give a little light for, for those that want to walk at night, for those that walk in the night to walk, you see. Just a, a lesser light. Now, that is what the law was. It was actually a reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ was going to come as the lamb. So it was shining in the Old Testament. Through those little sacrifices, say take a lamb and kill it on the 14th day and all that. It was producing a lesser light for them. Uh, he was going to come and give the people rest, the Holy Spirit. Now, it was shining in the Old Testament in that lesser light. Great light, which was not yet seen. In the night, you don't see the sun, right? But you see the moon. But the moon does not produce its own light. It's only reflecting the light of the sun. So, it's a redeemer that lives. Praise God. So, it was, it was, it, they had the lesser light. to work with. But now when the dispensation of that uh, um, lesser light now um, dispensations and through all those shadows and through all those laws, this woman was pregnant to put to bed the man child. To put to bed the Lord Jesus 
Christ. So you read through the Old Testament, all of those prophets telling the people that the Lord is coming. That is, they were going to give birth. It was going to come to a time where Christ will come. So the laws, all those things that they were carrying was just pregnancy to give birth to something. Praise God. So this woman now was um, traveling in bed. Now, verse 3. Now the picture shifts now. And there appeared another wonder. So there's a, another imagery coming. In another signification. There appeared another wonder. The same. The Waiting to devour that child, but see as soon as the child does, he said, But and she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations. With the rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God, unto God, and to his throne. Now, I want to understand that this thing is just written here like this in one verse. But that thing actually is a long time now. When Christ came out, <laughs> when Christ came here and then he, 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 he operated, he was born. Operated for 33 and a half years, operated for a space of time before he was caught up to God and to his throne. See? So the child was caught up to God and unto his throne. So, the devil could not devour the child. Now, verse 6 begins to say, And the woman fled Now, it does the same thing in verse 6. Times, time, and half a time. That's three and a half years. Three and a half years is what is 2,000. We are moving verse 6 to verse 14 because it's the same thing. But there's something that will cause this verse 6, this woman to flee. In verse 6, what is going to cause her to flee is the dragon. So that's actually verse 13. It's because of what the dragon was doing in verse 13 that began to make verse 6 possible. That the woman decided to run away. Okay, so verse 6 actually comes down to verse 14. So the next verse really should be verse 7. But between verse 5 and verse 7, there's something that is happening 
thing there that is bringing verse 7 into focus. Now, verse 7 is speaking about the war in heaven. How many have... Uh, War in heaven, um, uh, the war in heaven, and, and Michael and his angel fought, and then we have heard of it at least. See, and then we know we usually put it back down to way, way back that war that uh, yeah, to try to unseat God and everything. Yes, now there was actually a war in heaven. <laughs> It, 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 there was actually something that played out then. But now God is taking that thing and is bringing it here to signify something. Do we understand? There was a war. But now there's going to be something happen that looked like that thing that happened. So God is taking that thing and bringing it here to signify that to signify that there will be a war. I said we are talking about the overcomer's throne and we are looking at the warfare of the bride. Now, now when the woman brought forth the child in verse 5, and the child had run, he established his kingdom. And then he was caught up to God and to his throne. Now, according to the laws of God, now, now, let's read now. Um, let's read Leviticus. Leviticus. The book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. According to the laws of God, there was going to be a period where the woman needed to be kept aside. Uh, there was going to be a period. Somebody help us. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. There was going to be a period. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, if a woman has conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. Then she shall be unclean. In seven days, according to the days of the separation of her infirmity, yeah, shall she be unclean. unclean. Okay. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his person skin shall, shall be, be circumcised, circumcised, and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying. Three and thirty days, she shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. Praise God. You read when <laughs> you read when Mary gave birth to the Lord Jesus before he was presented in the temple. He said, "And when the days of her purification were over, they came into the temple with the man with the Lord Jesus Christ." Now that is, this is the this is, the, um, this is scripture that they were fulfilling in that place. Now, but it was given in the Old Testament under Jehovah's laws for a shadow. Now, when the woman gives birth, now, verse 5 said, and she brought forth a man child. According to God's laws, therefore, the woman, after she has given birth to a man child, she will be unclean for seven days. Now we are saying that something happened, the gap that brought us to verse 7, and there was war in heaven. 
The woman is unclean for seven days, so she's kept aside. Now, that woman is Israel. So you understand why for the next seven dispensations, Israel was kept aside. Israel was unclean. See, they they are not coming to purification. For seven days now, for the next seven dispensations, Israel was kept aside. Now, God was dealing with the Gentiles according to the kingdom that he has established. That kingdom, he called it the church. Praise God. Now, 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 when the church came into focus as his kingdom, what happened, therefore, is that that dragon entered into the church and there was war in heaven. The church now is what the book of Matthew called the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is likened unto, and the kingdom of heaven is likened unto. The church now is what the scripture said, and we are set together with Christ in where? So when he said, and there was war in heaven, now this is in the Gentile church dispensations, there will be war. War. Now, this is why the scripture described us to be dressed as soldiers. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, 11 to 18. And this is why we are called to handle the sword. Matthew chapter 10, 34 and 36. Let's, um, somebody help us read this. Ephesians 6. 11 to 18, then Matthew 10, 34 to 36. Yes. Okay, so please, another person just open to Matthew 10, 34 to 36, so you help us. Ephesians 6, 11 to 18. Put on the O armor of God. So this is the first messenger now as bringing these things up here and there's war. So he's saying put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now we are coming that to that to the wiles. Okay. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling. But against principalities. But against principalities and against powers. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of the world. Against the rulers of the darkness of the world. Of this world. Of this world. Okay. Against spiritual wickedness. Against spiritual wickedness. In high places. In high places. And there was war in heaven. Okay, so you now began to say, put on the breast, um, the uh, helmet of this, this of that, the breastplate of righteousness, and all that. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, Matt, uh, Matthew. So, so, when 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 Christ established a kingdom here, because this uh, kingdom that is already here, this kingdom, the kingdoms of this world, already has its ruler which you call the rulers of darkness and all. He already has his ruler. And then Christ established his kingdom here. Set it in heavenly places. What happened is that there needed to be war. That's what that place is saying. And there was war in heaven, in that kingdom, in the kingdom of, the, of, of heaven, the Gentile churches. Praise God. Now, uh, Matthew chapter 10. Anybody there? Matthew 10. 34 to 36. But I said unto you. But I said unto you. Swear not at all. Neither by heaven. Matthew 10. Okay. Think not that I am come to. Now see, people misunderstand the coming of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Many people preach. Peace, 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 peace. Let's peace. Let be peace, peace. You get peace. Yeah, gospel of peace. Now, because of that misunderstanding, he began to try to correct something here. Why? Because he's called Prince of Peace. 
Yeah, anybody that talks about Christ, he's just talking about peace. Ah, no, calm down now. You, you, know, you have to be peaceful. You have to be. But he's saying something here now. So don't think that I came to send peace on earth. I, I came to. I came. I came not to send peace. I did not come to put peace here. Yeah. But, but a sword. But a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance <laughs> against his father. I am come to set a man at variance against his father. That and is variance is division. Against her mo- her a daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother. The daughter. In law against her mother in law, and a man's foe shall be day of, and a man's foe shall be within his own household. What did he come to do? I came to set a sword. What do you do with a sword? You fight. There was war in heaven, so he understood these things and he came down. He set a sword. Now, the believer, therefore, is called to handle. Oh, the sword. Praise God. Now, uh, uh, because the devil will fight us with everything that is not in Christ. Anything that is not, if your father is not in Christ, he, is, he will fight you with your father. If your mother is not in Christ, he will fight you with your mother. That's why I said, he said, a, a father shall be a division against his son a mother against the daughter, if they are not in, in Christ, they will fight each other. Then he said, the man's enemy shall be within his own household. And there was war. Jesus Christ, yes, is proven to be true where he said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It will not overcome. Why? He said, and the dragon prevailed not. Praise God. Now, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Now, very soon, this age old, about 2,000 years old war that we have been fighting, very soon, this 2,000 years old war will come to an end. The song we sing, Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Stand in his strength alone. And the, the other place said, This day, the noise of battle, the next, the victor's song. Very soon, this age old battle will come to an end. And we would have been. Proven to prevail, but there's how. Now this we are. Uh, I was I'm uh, driving to how they prevailed because he said the the dragon didn't prevail, so the saints prevailed. They had, had the victory, but there's how they came to have victory over the dragon and over his angels and over his king. Now let's continue reading. He said, verse 8, and they prevailed and not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. He gave many names. Anyone here? Wait. <laughs> Many titles. Eh? So, uh, those are only you, Reverend, right, Reverend, Holy Apostle, they be, uh, see, it's here. Uh, he has many names. Okay, and now, now, he said, and, and Satan, now, The war he's waging is powered. Where we read in Ephesians said, 
put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles. Now, When he dropped it, Columba picked it up. When he dropped it, Luther. It's powered by deception. This is how he's, this is one of the, he's waging the well, by two things. One, the first thing is deception. The second thing, now verse 10 said, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Now the second thing with which he is waging his war is accusations. Deception and accusations. Two fronts. For us, two fronts by the which we overcome in this war. Praise God. Please cut to that speaker. The, this thing. Thank you. Um, so it says here that now at the end of the world, uh, at the end of the war, at the end of Verse, verse 13. A short time. Now you understand why he said that now. When he said he had but a short time. Now this is after the war. Here. So after that war here, how many years does he have? S seven, actually. Seven years. He has seven years. It's a short time. So, so they, they know their time. They know, know how far. When, they met, when Christ met with some of them in that, that demon, that, uh, that possessed man, what did they say? What? The, eh? eh? Thank you. Okay. He said, "What are we to do? Have, have you come to destroy us before our time? We still get get time now. Uh, why are you coming here? We, 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 we still get time. I, I, so, so uh, just don't. Uh, uh, yeah, just put us inside this peak." So.
way which he powered the war, the, the, the front by the which he is pushing the war is deception and accusation. That's verse 9 and verse 10. Two fronts. Deception and accusation. Now, to prevail, to overcome in this battle, verse 11 was giving the way. Verse 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Please. And they overcame him by, by the blood of the Lamb. Not only the blood of the Lamb. For those that think, oh, I have confessed that Jesus Christ loved me and died for me. And that's, he shed his blood for me. And that's, that's, that's it. Blood and words. Blood and testimony. Okay, now, the blood of the Lamb. Takes care of one part. We said the war is powered on two fronts. And so, victory is assured to us on two fronts. What happens? The blood of the land covers it. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. So that blood stays over our sins. So because the blood is over there now, when it comes to rage, push the wall in that, in that side, it look, uh, where the sin just now? The thing has been wiped away. We. This is what I said. It is the Red Sea of forgetfulness. Under the blood. Underneath the blood. <laughs> Praise God. It's hit under the blood. So he cannot find it again. Why? It is wiped away. Before they had the blood of bulls and turtle doves, he could cover sin. He could not take away sin. Now, the blood also has life inside. Hebrews, um, I think, no, Hebrews chapter 9. Or so. He said, he said, the law having a shadow of good things to come, but not the very image of those things. And he said, we, uh, we know that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. He said, but it was not possible. For the blood of bulls and turtle doves to take away sins. He said, for even so, the, the worshippers should not have had to make... Brought in, he said, This man, he said, Not come with the blood, he said, But he offered by one offering of himself. He said, One time he was offered and he perfected forever. All that trust upon him and obey him. And then the life that is inside is released. In the Old Testament, now you find, he told Noah, He said, There's life. In the blood. So that life is released and comes back upon the people. And now that causes the person to walk in a certain way. The enemy cannot put an accusation on the person again. Praise God. That's the first front. So for those that uh, rest on, uh, on, on I've, I've confessed that Jesus loved me and all that. Yes, that's one part. But that's not the only part by the which people are to overcome today. The next thing is a testimony. 
Praise God. We come down to a testimony. So there is a, a, a testimony. It is by the blood and by a testimony. It comes the word of their testimony. Praise God. Let's read them. Isaiah, Isaiah 8.16. Isaiah 8, chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. Thank you, sir. Bind up the testimony and seal the law up amongst my disciples. So, the testimony is bound up amongst his disciples. It's sealed up amongst Amongst his disciples. Now, these are the people that are holding the testimony. And it has been coming from generation to generation. Now, um, Revelation, please. Revelation 19. Now, Revelation 19. Somebody please read for us verse 10. Revelation 19 verse 10. Now, and I fell at his feet to worship him. To worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. See. I okay. Okay. I am thy fellow servant. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren. And of thy brethren. That have, that have the testimony of Jesus. That that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of, of, of prophecy. Praise God. <laughs> now see, there's a testimony. <laughs> God. There's a testimony of Jesus Christ. It is not it's done, I don't stay, I don't like. That's not the testimony. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. That's what he's saying is that the testimony of Jesus, somebody that has the testimony of Jesus has the ability to know the things that are coming. Do you understand? What is prophecy? To foretell. Now the person that is holding the testimony of Jesus Christ has the ability to know what things are coming. Now, put it like this. The blood takes care of accusation. The testimony takes care of deception. Do you understand? So, all those wiles in deception that he's going to move against the church, there's a testimony that's standing against it. If you can handle the testimony, you can see See every deceptive maneuver that is coming. Now, I'm playing chess. I'm playing draft. I'm playing ludo. Now, before the person I'm playing with rolls his dice and put it, I know what he's going to get. I know the seat he's going to move. I know what he's going to do. Can that person win me? That thing. I want a wheat. So he said, that's why I said overcoming power is already on our side. Why? Because of this testimony. Praise God. Everything that the enemy was going to do, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ bound them up together and prophesied. and gave it to the church. 
This is the testimony. Now, this is what we are holding now. This is, this, this is different from, I went to church today, they told me not to steal, not to lie down. This is not, not to steal. It is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the spirit of prophecy. So then, you can stand today and say, and, and, why are you people not registered? Why are you people not registered? In, in WCC? Why are you people not registered with PFM? Why are you people not registered with CAM? We have a testimony. There's something we are looking at. What is it? We know that after the lamb was slain, he came up again and because of the word that is coming, he grew seven horns. It's a testimony for us. He grew seven horns. For what? Defense and battle. For the seven church ages. We saw when, we can see the past moves. We saw when he grew the first horn in Apostle Paul. We saw when he grew the second horn in Iranus. We saw when he grew the third one in, in, in Martin. We saw when he grew the fourth one in Columba. We saw when he grew the fourth, fifth one in Luther. We saw when he grew the sixth one in Wesley. We are seeing the seventh one on stage. It's a testimony. Now, when we know that the beast is going to have an image made unto him, we know what the image is. So, we cannot register with that association because it is the image of the beast. It's a, a testimony. Praise God. Now, we are saying, uh, Antichrist is coming from China. Ah, we have a testimony. We know, we know, we know that we will be watching America and we will be watching, uh, we will be watching Rome. We are watching America, we are watching Rome because the world told us that two beasts to rise. It's a testimony we have. So somebody's talking about CCCs. And then uh, CCCs. And the, the mark, the CCCs. We have a testimony. We know how they are going to distribute that mark. Because he said, first, he will deceive the people to make an image and to accept the image. Now, if they can accept the image, then it is sealed. Praise God. We have a testimony. Now, 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 all of these things put together is what I said. The testimony of Jesus is the, the spirit of prophecy. So we can tell you, Vatican can be destroyed. We can tell you, California will be destroyed. Now we can tell you also that Rome will be Overcame. So Matthew 24, verse 24. When he raises up house, the elect cannot be deceived because there's a testimony they are looking at. Praise God. This is where we stand. Now, there's a reason why we baptize in the name name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if the whole world is baptized. That was once delivered unto the saints. It was delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Gave it to the saints. On down, on down, on down. The, the thing kind of ate away in the dark ages. But beginning Luther, restoration began to come in. First, justification. Next, sanctification. Then the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then with full restoration of the word. Now, we are talking about a testimony. So we, we tell our women not to wear dresses like men, to have their hair grow out. Not to be painted up like masquerades and things like that. It's a reason we have a testimony. Now, they, you know what a testimony does. Let, let me reference the, the three Hebrew children. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. According to their Babylonian names now. Now, let me reference them in Babylon as I round off. 
Now they came to Babylon and then there was an edict that went out. He put up a, a big image and began to say, and now if we thought that and said that, notice how the Babylonian um, um, rulership began, the Gentile ages began by the worship of an image. And it is also going to close up by the worship of an image in mystery Babylon. Because now we've left fiscal Babylon, we have come to Revelation 17 that is mystery Babylon. Now, in, in physical Babylon now, they were Israel, children of God, of the covenant and services and everything, promises, but yet they had gone into captivity in Babylon. And then they were locked up in that town. And in that day, an edict came out and said, and said, everybody, see, once you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the this, the that, seven types like this, and all manner of music, everybody should fall down and worship. Notice, it wasn't even a clear, a, clear, a, a unified song. It was all manner of music, reggae they play, bass they play, uh, hip hop they play, tambourine, jari, every, all, all types of music, and the slow ones, they play everything. Any, once you hear all of them play together, bow down and worship. Now we are looking at this in our age also, because all manner of music we play today. Uh, Celeste is talking his own with candle. Catholic is talking with only with rosary. Um, uh, Pentecostal, they are talking with their own with tongues. Everything, every Baptist is talking his own. Columba, everything, everything is talking his own. The Hindu is talking his own. Uh, Krishna is talking his own. Uh, different types of music, and the scripture said they will gather together as one. Now, when people hear all manner of music, the command is that they should fall down and accept it. We are worshiping the same God. Set piece. We play that thing on this TV. We played it here where Adeboye stood up and said it is his vision and it is God's giving go to gather all religion of the world. All manner of music, his mandate, and everybody is accepting it. We are back to Babylon. Now, in that day, all of Israel, the children of God, they were there. When all manner of music played, all the, the Israelites, along with the Babylonians and everything, all of them fell down and worshipped. But when every head went down, only three heads were standing. They were Israelites. These were not the only Israelites in Babylon. But what was happening? These people had a testimony. Three heads were standing. I said, play them again, play them again. Did I say this thing all loud? Increase, increase the volume. Oh, yeah, you should return as you were. Return. All of them stand again. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. Vroom, all manner of music play. Then, vroom. only three heads did they stand. Oh, God. What did they happen? I bet, come. Come, come. Stand here. No, not here. That the person that will not bow to this thing, they will throw this thing, this person inside this fire. And they said, No, it's not as though we're not here. Okay, but you people hear the music. And we, we heard, we heard, we heard. He said, But you know, this fire is not hotter than our God that's a consuming fire. <laughs> now, now, we are Israelites. We don't bow to anything except it's the Lord God Jehovah. I say, so do it. And he said, in this matter, we are not careful to answer you. We can be careful. Small, small. We talk small, small. Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Follow peace with all men. Good afternoon, sir. But in this matter, no, 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 no. no this one, not. We are, now we are at war now. This is battle. In this matter, we are not careful to answer you. Because you're asking us to bend the knee to bow to this thing. He said, no, if, uh, 
He said, our God is more than able to deliver us from this fiery furnace. Even if he let us enter and die. Revelation. He said, they love not their life even unto the death. Let us enter and put us. May we die. May we go, go where they go. Send us to where we are going. And then, and then he said, oh yeah, increase, hit that thing seven times. In, increase them. Now the people that went to increase the fire, it was so hot, the people that went to increase the fire that didn't enter, they died. The people that came to throw them into so the fire, they died. But here is the mystery. Because they had a testimony by the which they were going to overcome, when they entered into the fire, the fire was only hot enough to cut their bands. The scripture said the smoke of fire did not light upon their clothes. That is when they came out of the fire, they were not even smelling smoke. That's the power of our God. Praise God. Now, these people they overcame that situation. Where all Israelites had bowed in that situation, but they overcame. How? By the testimony that they had. Praise God. Now, the same thing we have come to mystery Babylon. The same situation is building up, and all manner of musics are playing, different denominations, each one with his own. This I see, this I see, this I see. Then we come to different religions. All manner of music are playing. And the people have started bowing and accepting it. Adeboye is championing. Komu is inside. See why we say it's not by I, I don't see. I don't lie. Preach all the message of holiness and you bow down to that image. You die too. Praise God. Komu is inside and people are bowing and worshipping that thing. But at that point, there is a testimony we are holding. It is by that testimony we overcome. Now, this is why it's important. The testimony. So, if you don't know the testimony, how will you understand the wiles of the enemy? How you see the schemes when it's coming? Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So, we are looking at that thing. See, when we saw Israel going back to their homeland. We began to say, ah, it's home going time. Because see, look up. They say they are going back. The scripture said, the scripture said that when you see the fig tree, put a branch out again. He said, know that this generation will not pass. So then somebody saying, uh, my, my, if I just marry, I'll give birth, my wife, then at least maybe I, when I've reached like 70 years old, I will have like, like four children and by then. I've grown then. I, I should, they should have go, given birth. At least I'll carry my grandchildren now. I'll carry my grandchildren. Then you have to leave a lasting legacy for them. So That when they come, they will have money that they will inherit to start life. With my father in his throne. How did the Lord Jesus overcome? Matthew chapter 4. The scripture said, The enemy met him with deceptive maneuvers, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. Deceptive maneuvers. If thou be the Son of God, turn this thing into bread. There's only one way he overcame. 
He did not overcome by I praying. He did not now say, ah, devil, I cast you, I hold you, I, I hold you, but no, no, no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> he met him on the, with, the, with the sword that was dropped. He overcame. He overcame by the word of his testimony. Praise God. Now, those that are able to overcome, they too, they have to be the word. They have to become the word. It's the only way they can share on that throne. The only thing that sits on that throne is the word. So, to him that overcome it, will I grant to sit with me? On my throne, even as I overcame and I'm set with my father in his throne. Take note. No matter the offerings, no matter the sacrifices, no matter the dancings, no matter the singing, no matter the prayer, no matter all these things that we do. Overcoming power is not assured, but by the testimony. And by the blood. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll round it off here today. We'll continue our class. And we are. Actually, reaching the end of it now. We'll continue by next week. In Jesus Christ's name. But that's testimonies, thanksgiving, split put it down. Send it to uh, our coordinators so that, that they can prepare it. A question? Please, okay. Let's hear. Revelation 12. Mm. And I will attach it with the life from wisdom from Daniel also. Okay. He says, verse 9, he says, that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So, and his Yeah. What advice do you have for us? Like example, you will see some people will call whether that 
to have five pastors say there's a fool who come and meet him, watch this person. Uh, is that word an accusing word? What advice do you have for us? No, it depends on what is being said. The, 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 uh, see, the, the question is a bit um, ambiguous. So it depends on what is actually being said there. If if somebody is saying watch this person, uh, yes. Now we have to watch now. Now, the 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 um, the scripture said we should test uh, anybody that comes in here carry spirit come. So that one day is certainty. We have to test every spirit. So. When somebody comes in here, we we watch the person. We are we know what we are watching for, so we are trying to test this kind of spirit that is operating through. So he might come in here to show some kind of love, uh, but we we watch the spirit that is displaying this thing that is displaying. And come in here to give prophecy. We will watch the spirit to see this thing that is talking. Which spirit is this? You might come in here to display very caring attitude, uh, to help people to repair the whole place and everything. Yes. We will watch the spirit to know what is happening. So that is a, it's a standard, it's a normal thing. But if you are talking about the accusations, we run again. We're expecting sinners here. So the point is, we come here and we give ourselves to the world and we buy gold. We buy character from him. So if, if the enemy, definitely, there's something uh, we also have to know is that there's always the wheat and the chaff. But the chaff will be separated. That's why I said the devil will be cast out. The, de the chaff will be separated from the wheat. But they usually are always together. So even here too, Testimony. So if somebody still comes and tell you, say, ah, this person is a sin now, is a this, don't talk to him, is a that, and now then you ask the person, but I thought the scripture said we should pray for, uh, uh, have you prayed for him? You have overcome the devil that is talking at that time. Praise God. All right, we'll round off. Oh, that, is this a question, please?